Hi, I'm David. Have you ever felt like life had just fallen over on top of you and crushed you? That happens to an awful lot of us. Uh, what we we have a myth that we should be on top of life, and we should be, everything should be going perfectly well for us, and it's going well for our neighbors, it's going well for the people we work with. There's something wrong with me because I feel crushed by it. Let me draw that for you real quickly just to see what if, if this uh, resonates with you. If this rectangle rep represents life, the myth is that we're supposed to be up here on top with a great big smile on our face. But so many of us feel like, and I'm going to draw it this way because I've put X's in the eyes, um, we feel like we're underneath the weight of it and it's just crushing us. Uh, and we don't know what to do. We just feel like we can't get up from underneath it. Well, what we have done what, in, in some of the counseling that I've done with people is one of the first things that I like to help a person do is to get out from under this where at least they're not crushed by life, by it. Um, the next thing is even though they think they still need to be on top of life is to help them understand that there's no elevator up to the top, there's no ladder up to the top, and this is like a 10-story building to, to a 100-story building for some of us, and there just seems to be no way up. And so a lot of people get just real hopeless about feeling like they'll just never make it to the top of life. Well, at that point, what I ask my, a lot of my clients to do is to move way over here where we can get a better perspective on life and view it from a bit of a distance rather than be up so close to it that it looks like we're looking straight up to a 100-story building and can't get on, to, on the very top of it. From this perspective, uh, what I can help people do and often have helped people do is to build a set of strategies or stair steps on how to get up to the top. Um, we set goals for them. And I set, as a matter of fact, um, a very specific kind of set of goals that I call scram goals. When I think about setting a goal, I think about getting moving on something. And when I think about getting moving on something, I think of the word scram. And what I do is I ask myself five different questions about wh whether my goal that I'm setting my, for myself is really a good goal. First of all, is it a specific goal? For example, if my goal, let's just say it's to lose some weight. If my goal is to lose 100 pounds by in six weeks, uh, based on just the spe specific criterion, would that be a good goal? Yeah, it's specific. I want to lose 100 pounds in six weeks. So I can answer a yes to that part of the question. Then I have to ask myself, is it a challenging goal? Look at me. Would it be a challenge for me to lose 100 pounds in six weeks? It would be a huge challenge. So it's still specific. It's still challenging. So I can still answer yes to it. But then I come to the R question. Is it realistic? Would it be realistic for me to lose 100 pounds in six weeks? Well, of course not. Um, I'd be gone almost. So then if I answer no to any one of the questions, I have to go back to the very beginning and ask the question still specific, in a specific, still in a challenging, but now in a realistic way. Well, let's say it's 10 pounds in six weeks. Is that specific? Yes. Would it be a challenge for me to lose 10 pounds in six weeks? Probably so. Is it realistic? Well, I could probably lose 10 pounds. So it probably wouldn't hurt for me to lose 10 pounds in the next six weeks. Well, so the answer to that is yes. I ask the, the fourth question, is it attainable? This differs a little bit from the realistic question, are there any circumstances that would prevent me from losing weight? Uh, do I have bipolar disorder, for example, and am I taking uh, lithium as a medication for it? Lithium is a salt, and it automatically adds 15 to 20 pounds to a person who's taking it. Uh, some blood pressure medications or some health issues may prevent it. Some dietary issues may prevent it. Well, for me, there are no preventative things for me that, that keep me from losing 10 pounds. So the answer would be yes. Well, finally, I asked myself, is it measurable? Well, yes, losing 10 pounds would be real measurable. I could put pound 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10. Week 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I could simply weigh myself each week. And I could find that I could attain that goal. That might be one of the steps that this person may need to get back on top of life. Uh, reaching for a scram goal so that he can move from here to here and start making progress on toward his 
his challenge of getting back up into life. There may be other steps that he that may be a little bit more difficult or a little more complicated that, that he could adopt to. But all, all along the way, if we build a strategy for helping this person to get from here under the crush of life to where they're out from under it and looking at it from a different perspective and then making progress along the way, there's a chance that they might be able to sooner or later make it to where they really are on top of life. Chuck Swindoll wrote a wonderful little book many years ago called Three Steps Forward, Two Steps Back. And what Chuck said is in, in that book is sometimes what will happen is we'll take three steps forward, but life will do something to knock us two steps back. And he also said that it's our tendency for most of us to bemoan the loss of two more than we celebrate the net gain of one. And I think that it's very, very important as we're working on trying to reorder our lives to get back on top of life after being crushed by it or hurt by it or being pushed back, to make sure that when we are making some solid progress steps, to make sure that even if life knocks us back a couple of steps, that we celebrate the net gain of one. That'll give me more momentum and more, more positive energy toward making another three steps forward just in case I get back, knock back two more. Well, what have I done? I have had now a, pot, a net gain of two. And if I just keep going through that, sooner or later what happens is I start reaching higher and higher planes and I can more easily see my way to the top. This becomes a great way of looking at your life and looking at the way that you can reorder it in such a way that you set good goals for yourself that are, that are specific, challenging, realistic, attainable, and measurable, and you can start making more and more and more progress toward being on this thing we call life.